In this last segment dealing with exponents, I just want to address order of operations. And some of them I'm going to do in my head, and some of it I'm going to have you help me with using a calculator. So this, this question number 22, I just want you to think about this number raised to the fifth power. A negative 2 to the fifth power means to multiply a negative 2 times itself five times. Remember that when you multiply a negative number, um, an odd number of times, you get a negative result. So whatever 2 to the 5th is, and it happens to be 32, you could type that on your calculator right now. You could go 2 and then hit the caret key and then the 5 and it would give you 32. But this happens to be a negative 2 raised to the 5th power. And so I'm going to just go ahead and recognize that with order of operations, I should do the exponents first. So I'm just going to copy this 6 down, and this turns out to be a negative 32. Right here, I have a subtraction sign, and then next would be to multiply. And a negative times a positive is a negative. So I'm going to write that down as a negative 16. And finally now, I'm going to work from left to right, adding and subtracting. So again, you know, you can do it all at once because this is a subtraction problem, and you're going to subtract a negative, so you're going to add the opposite. So that turns out to be adding 16. So sure, you could take the 16 and 6 and get 22, and then add a negative 32 to that and get a negative 10. Absolutely. Or you could work from left to right in a positive 6 and a negative 32 turned out to be a negative 26. And when you subtract this negative, you add a positive, so you add 16, and that turns out to be a negative 10. You can try this on your calculator, and really you can type it just as you see it. So 6 plus, and then open parentheses. The only thing is this sign right here is a negative symbol, and it's to the left of the enter button on a TI-84, a negative symbol. Um, I don't have my graphing calculator on this computer, but on the far right-hand side, there's your add, subtract, multiply, and divide buttons. And actually, I'm drawing a blank as to which, um, which ones are. It looks to me like uh, your divide and your multiply are the top. So here's your divide and your multiply, and probably your add and subtract are right here. Um, then there's an enter button right here on the far bottom right corner of your Texas Instrument graphing calculator. Well, right here is the negative. I'm going to do this in red. Right here is the negative button. That button right there is used for this, negative 2. This button right here, the minus sign, is um, above the enter key. It's one of those four. That's the minus key. This is the negative. On your Texas Instrument graphing calculator, a negative sign is going to have only three pixels, and it's going to be a little higher on your calculator, and a minus sign is going to turn out to be five pixels and this negative sign is going to be a little higher and it's going to be a little bit smaller. So when you type this in in your calculator, this negative sign on your, on your graphing calculator is going to be a little higher and it's only going to be 3 pixels. It's this sign right here. Then 0.6888 and then you have a squared key somewhere over here on your graphing calculator. This will be minus, open your parentheses, use this negative sign right here. Put in the 0.714, close your parentheses, and that raised to the 6th power is a caret. You have a caret key on your graphing calculator, so it's kind of like a t uh, mm, an upside-down V. Um, hit raise that to the 6th power, and I just want you to know that when you do that calculation, you'll get a negative 0.606. You should try that out to make sure you're using your calculator well. The next problem, though, I could do without my calculator. So again, um, I... I allow you to use calculators in my class. It just depends. Um, so 3 to the 4th power, you know, I might need to type that on my calculator. I'd go 3 caret 4 to do that, and it's going to tell me that that's 81. Again, you can do all this on your graphing calculator without stopping. I'm going to do it by hand. So 81 minus, and then in parentheses, i got to do that first. 5 minus 3 is 2, and then i got to raise that to the 4th power. If you need to, go 2 caret 4 on your calculator. That's going to give you 16. So the numerator of this problem is 81 minus 16. And finally, that's equal to uh, 65, it looks like. 
Downstairs, however, 8 minus 2 to the third power, I need to do the exponents. First, so 2 to the third power is 8, because it's 2 times 2 times 2. Well, 8 minus 8 is 0, and whenever you take a number and try to divide it by 0, you have to say that that's undefined. So that one's kind of an unusual one. Um, I, uh, if in doing number 25 on your graphing calculator, if you want to calculate this number and put that down on a piece of paper, and then calculate this positive number times this negative number, which is probably about, you know, negative 7 or 6 or something, and then divide these two numbers. And I have in my notes that the answer to that is 170.5. So again, um, if you don't do what's in the numerator and write it down, do what's in the denominator and write it down and then do the division, you may have trouble because this big fraction bar means to do what's upstairs, do what's downstairs, and then do the division. If you wanted to, you could put parentheses here and here, then hit your division bar and then parentheses here and here, and then hit enter at the very end and you would get the 170.5. So be careful with um, a, a big fraction bar like that. The answer to number 26, and I just kind of want to have you practicing with your calculator. I have um, an answer for number 26 to be uh, 48.8956. Uh, Whatever you do, in a problem like this, don't insert your own parentheses. Type it just like you see it and hit enter at the very end. If you start introducing parentheses that aren't there, you're changing order of operations, and your Texas Instrument graphing calculator knows order of operations. Um, finally, um, this number has three significant digits. This one has four, this one has three, this one has three, three, and three. So I would round my answer to 48.9 so that I have three significant digits in instead of all of this. Okay, let's look at these unusual questions here at the very end. This one says, Simplify this expression where a and b are positive integers. Um, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is what that is. Um, so I don't have to deal with any negative signs. When I multiply and the bases are alike and I do what's in the parentheses first, because that's what order of operations tells me to do, and then square it after the fact, when I add these exponents, when I add a minus b and a plus b, then this a and this a combine to be 2a, and this minus b and that plus b are gone. So I have y to the 2a power, and then now I need to square that. Remember, when you raise a power to a power, you multiply those exponents. So 2a times 2 is just 4a. So the answer to this problem is finally y to the 4a power. Pretty simple problem, but it sure looked crazy when we started. Let's look at this next one. In studying planetary motion, this expression sometimes arises. So in uh, order of operations, deal with the exponents. So mr to the negative 1 means 1 over mr to the positive 1 r to the negative 2 means 1 over r to the positive 2. So I wanted to deal with those exponents and get those in the proper form before I tried to put this all together. This capital G, little m, and big M right here are in the numerator. They're over 1. You're welcome to now maybe put the numerator and denominators together. It might be the easiest for you. So take all of this and multiply it by 1. Well, that's just G, little m, big M. And then downstairs, 1 times all of this is just all of this. This r to the first and this r to the second are going to become r to the third with the m in front. So I have m and r to the third. And finally, now I have a fraction that I can reduce my common factor. So m over m is just equal to 1. I don't need to write it because I have other letters. So I have capital G, capital M over r to the third power. And this expression, when studying planetary motion, is much easier to work with than is this one. That uh, concludes our study of exponents for now. We will be seeing them again, and we'll be using them throughout the whole semester.